Hello everybody, my name's David Eagle, welcoming you to the first recording for the Shoots and Roots Project. As it's the first recording, it would be a good idea to outline what the Shoots and Roots Project is all about, and I suppose it would be an even better idea to hear it straight from the person who knows about it best, Project Coordinator Jeanette Granger. Hello Jeanette. Hello there David. Um, Shoots and Roots, it's actually the youth element of Festival on the Moor. Festival on the Moor has been running for about five years now, and... um, Really, we're just wanting to get young people more interested in local heritage and local culture. So in how did the idea come about originally then? Um, I think it's just sort of grown over the years, actually. Um, you know, obviously a lot of the people who are attending Festival on the Moor events are from the sort of slightly older generation. And um, we really wanted to get young people more interested and more involved in the festival. Um, and Shoots and Roots seemed like a, an ideal way to do it. So when you come to envisage a project like this i suppose envisaging it is all very well and good but how do you actually go about bringing it into fruition okay so obviously we started off um, with discussions with the youth focus panel which of course you're a member of david and um really decided that a project would probably be the best idea to kickstart interest um in local culture and local uh, folk music and traditions so we obviously sat down planned out a project and um, then went to the Heritage Lottery Fund, their Young Roots Scheme, um, which very generously um, awarded us a grant. And uh, we've planned a a year's project. Uh, We're going to be working with children all over the uh, North York Moors um, over the next 12 months. So it's it's going to be a really, really worthwhile project. Excellent. So what what kind of activities and... uh aspects are you covering at uh, the the Shoots and Roots Youth events? Okay, well Shoots and Roots, it actually at the moment we're running um, every every week um, there's a sort of two and a half hour long session every week and uh, we're trying to cover as much as we possibly can um, but it's got a heritage focus we're looking at um, sort of local history, elements of local history and local culture um, but we're obviously doing that in a very interesting exciting way um, for teenagers and um, so we're introducing elements of music, um, singing, drama, arts and crafts, all sorts of things. Um, And this time we're actually looking at uh, Christmas and New Year traditions. But uh, I have to say that we've had vocal coaching and and all sorts of instruments, so there's a sort of a wide variety of opportunities for the people involved, isn't there? Yeah, there is. I mean, one of the uh, main elements, actually, is an instrument library, um, which which we're developing. We've managed to get um, our hands on uh, melodians, mandolins, uh, fiddles, guitars... Uh, which we're loaning out to the youngsters. Um, they're actually f- they're free to borrow, and um, they can also have some free tuition as well to get them started on that. So it's you know getting children interested um, in traditional instruments as well. We mentioned the Youth Focus Panel. Do you want to uh, explain a little bit about that? Yeah, the Youth Focus Panel um, really is sort of part of and independent of the Shoots and Roots. Um, it's really the sort of youth element of the Festival on the Moor and to just to make sure that we continue, or start and continue, to make the festival um, more relevant to young people. Um, so they've got their ideas for what we should be putting on as part of the festival, uh, festival activities throughout the year and, and part of the main festival as well, uh, just to make it more relevant, really, for, for youngsters. On the week that I attended the Shoots and Roots project to do some recording, we had two teachers... Gordon Tyrrell, a professional folk singer and guitar player, and Brian Butcher, a drama instructor. Because there were two teachers, the project never got tedious. Half an hour of music followed by half an hour of drama, a short break, and the same again. We now hear from Gordon Tyrrell. There must be some way out of here, said the joker to the thief. 
We've got Gordon Tyrrell with us now, who uh, you'd have thought you'd be able to rest, Gordon, after you've just sort of done about what, 45 minutes of um, ongoing teaching of various instruments, guitar, sitar, uh, and mandolin, but unfortunately you've been dragged in here to do a little bit of an interview with us. Have you um, had experience of doing what we class as youth projects before? Not a lot, but I have done a few things in my time, but uh, yeah, it's always new. It's always it got unexpected um, elements to it. You never know what you're going to get the, and how many people are going to turn up. It's been good tonight, though. People have come in uh, good numbers and they're enthusiastic. Yeah, I was going to say, there's this sort of it's enthusiasm which yeah. perhaps isn't inherent in the kind of project that this is, but mm. nevertheless it seems to be the case. People picking up the mandolin and the yeah. and the sitar and, mm. and the guitar. You were saying yourself that you learnt the guitar from an early age as well. So I did. It's Re- kind of relatively a, early, 10, uh, 10 I think when I started. Yeah, and that's kind of about the age we've got here, sort of 13-year-olds yeah. to 17-year-olds, yeah. yeah. that, that kind of, yeah. that kind of yeah. age. No, it's that's nice when you get enthusiastic people and uh, it gives them a chance to pick up an instrument and have yeah. a go you can't always do that so easily see so that's a little bit of a kind of Irishy type jiggy thing you know but it's a nice sound it's not a folky sound you know you can have a go on this if you want. What about the instruments then that you've been playing? You've been playing the guitar, the sitar, and the mandolin. Have you got a favourite? Uh, the guitar. Oh, you're also the guitar, so we're mandolin, all going for the guitar. Mandolin. Oh, yeah, we're the... Hang on, you're changing your mind. Well, I like all. There doesn't Same. seem to be much going for the sitar. For the, for the sitar. Oh, I like the sitar. You like the sitar, like right? The yeah. So, have you been converted then? Do you like folk music? Are you a bit unsure? It's what? Really oh. so He's all right. So all right. So so right. So all right, OK. As mentioned earlier, it's not only music that's on offer for the Shoots and Roots project participants, but drama too. 15-year-old Woodrow is especially interested in acting. We hear from him about the drama group and what they're working towards. Well, it's, um, it's a mama's play. Yes. And it's, um, it's light-hearted uh, comedy. Uh, mm. it, it's basically very, very silly. Uh, it, it's just it just it's just for fun. There's no um, real plot to it. It's, it's just a right. just for a laugh. It's a bit of a farce. A yes, of a, yes. Farce. I open the door. I enter in. I hope the day will soon begin. Stir up the fire and make a light for in this house there'll be a fight. And if you don't believe the words I say, step in, King Charles, and clear the way. What will King Charles do? King Charles is my name. Sword and pistol my by my side. I'm bound to win the game. Oh god, in, in comes King Charles. Oh, King Charles is nice. I think that was meant to be some sort of enigmatic bit there when uh, King Charles was challenged I think King Charles was meant to rise to the challenge as say, quite enigmatically but unfortunately King Charles actually dropped his sword so. we've got Brian Butcher with us now who's uh, in charge of the dramatic proceedings which complements what Gordon Tyrrell's been doing and still is doing you know with the professional he's still going strong there Brian just from listening and, and the listeners will hear but just from the warm ups that you were doing I mean what we were having a, a penguin coming for tea and, and stretches and uh, Dracula and all sorts of crazy games that you were playing you've presumably had experience of doing all this with children before I imagine oh <laughs> quite a lot yeah I mean, seen, it's definitely I, seen I've been a drama teacher for a lot of years in uh, right. state school in Whitby I suppose the main thing I try and get across to them when they're doing this is you haven't especially people who haven't are not really very used to it mm. it helps if you don't mind making a fool of you Yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't mind looking a bit silly, if you if you if you're worried about how silly you look all the time, just, especially just look at the rest, of the, just look at everybody else, and they're all looking silly. It especially helps if you're acting the fool, I suppose. Well, it does help. If you're acting the fool, yeah. and you are being yeah. the fool, and that's absolutely perfect. I think what we saw here, and what I saw, and what you'll certainly get as we go around, is the. Uh, the enthusiasm they're really loving it the bits that they love the most are being dead and making other people dead I think that really gets them doesn't it that's what, that's that's what a, makes a good drama that's a, that's a fair point well it is I mean, yes I, th- I think most that's what makes a good drama for the children they, they, they seem they, to they enjoy, enjoy that kind rather than some lengthy prose or something so I think oh, you've sure. picked oh there's a bit of a kerfuffle here no, so you, Jack, you wait until you watch this one. Think Charles will get up all the way. Okay, I'll hold it. Oh. 
Very, very theatrical. We have a dead person. We have a dead person. Who's died? Me. Who are you? Seamus. Who are you playing in the play? Uh, a knight. A knight? And who have you just been killed by? Uh, King Charles. King Charles has killed you. Well, that means, I suppose, it's a bit of an honour to be killed by King Charles, I would say. And you're not doing... Well, well, you're not doing that bad for someone who's dead. I've got to say, you're talking. Oh, uh, Exactly, he didn't think of that one, did he? Now, how canst thou, how canst thou? My head is made of iron, my body's made of steel, my hands and feet of knucklebone. I challenge thee on the field. So there's a bit of a, a duel going on here. Very excellently choreographed. I think they've probably, I'm a bit worried, I think they've probably done this before, sword fighting. Now I've knocked him to the ground. Yeah, she has as well. For the last few weeks and for the next couple of weeks, the Shoots and Roots project is gearing towards a Christmas event. Yes, everybody's working really hard at the moment um, with rehearsals for our big show, which is on the 23rd of December um, at the Danby Parish Church. It's called a Yorkshire Boss Sale and it's a fantastic, magical celebration of Christmas. Um, traditions old and new, but mainly old. It's a beautiful, beautiful show. Well, thank you very much for listening to the first Shoots and Roots project recording. We'll be back with another recording in probably about two or three weeks, which will hopefully be exhibiting the successes of our Christmas wassail.
can get smaller guitars actually. So if, yeah, so if you're a bit on the small side at, at the moment, you could get a small guitar, yeah. You, so you have it. That's right. I know. <laughs> Mosses their seeds air blow, all in the web of life. Hear the skin of a leaf as it stretched like a drum, sounding the beat of jeweled raindrops that come from a cloud on the wind but scudding the ocean, on the star-studded skies, full of atoms in motion, in the web of life.
Hello. Mary is about to set sail as she slips away from her moorings. The crowd hears the traditional cry of the
Thank you.